So I wasn't planning on doing a video on this so soon, but the parking module turned up today, um, and it's taken me a few few hours to to get the signals out of it that I needed to. It's not quite as simple as what you'd normally do with the control panel. The parking module is working quite different, so I thought I'd just do a, a quick video on how I've managed to get it sending the sending the signals. As I imagine this setup is probably going to be quite common. So just a quick overview of what we've got going on. We've got the breadboard here. Uh, these bottom tracks here are the 12 volts, 0 volts and plus 12 volts. For the power supply over here, this is just a USB converter just to power the pie from if I need to. This is the panel that was in the first video showing you how to set up the CAN bus. This top track on the breadboard is the CAN bus channels and you can see the resistors here. I haven't got 120 ohm resistors so I've put two 250s at each end to, to bring it down to, the, to an acceptable level and you've got the other two at that end. So whenever I want to plug a new module in all I've got to do is plug CAN, can high the top track, CAN low in the bottom track. So over here is a bit of a mess. So I wasn't really planning on doing this, but you've got a Raspberry Pi here with a Pi Can 2 sat on top, wired into the CAN bus channels. Then below that, this is the parking module. So you've got these are for the back sensors, this bank of pins, this is for the front sensors, this bank, and this is for your power and your CAN bus. And again, that's just wired in over onto the CAN bus channels. All the bits in the middle of the breadboard are just things I've stuck on there to stop me stop me losing them for now. Okay, so we're remote desktop back, back onto the Raspberry Pi. Everything's booted up. Everything's set up exactly how it was in the first video in terms of setting up the Pi Can and the CAN bus. So if you remember, if you've watched the last video, if I do a CAN dump on the Raspberry Pi, so now doing a CAN dump on CAN 0. If I turn this panel on now, we'll get a flood of mes messages coming through, which we do. So I know these are only the messages for this panel because I've, I've been working on that quite a bit. 2C8 is one ID and 50F is the other ID, which I think is a kind of heartbeat. So this is wired in and nothing's coming on with it still. So with this panel there's two ways to get to start sending messages. One is pressing the power button. The other one is if any CAN bus message gets sent, then it will start transmitting messages. So if you look on this screen here, if I just send a message, you can see in this window that panel has come to life. It's not received any messages now, so it's turned itself back off again. Parking module doesn't seem to be working. So what I'm suspecting it is well, I know it is now because I've gone through it, but what I was sus suspecting it was is that it's waiting for a, a specific message to turn itself on. So this can be quite tricky to do, especially if, if you're in the car, because in the car it will just be working and there's a flood of messages and you don't know which message is the one that's told it to turn on. So what I always keep, and I'll probably recommend anyone who's getting into this, is a, a can dump of all the messages that get sent when the car starts up. So to do one of these, we'll do it on this one. So if I do if I type can dump can zero and at the end all you got to do is put a hyphen L and then that means it logs that can dump to a file. So if I press enter on this one so it says it that's the file name that it's logging to. If I now power the panel on see the window on the left we get the messages come through. I'll stop this can dump in this window. Now if I do an ls which lists all your files in your directory you see we've got one here 2009 2019 12th of December. So let's open that up. So to do that we do nano which is the text editor. Can dump and if you remember from before the tab button auto completes because there's two files that are the same up to here, it stops. So we want the 12 one. 
and then this is what we get as the output. These are all the all the messages that we just saw coming here, but it logs them all and it logs them all with timestamps. So I think I mentioned it in the first video, but you can replay these files back onto the canvas, which is quite handy. So if we've got this one, so this log file here, that's the log file that I took ages ago of starting the car. So I started the can dump before I even turning the ignition on, turned the ignition on, started the car up and then let it run for, for a few minutes and just logged all the files. So then I've got like almost an ideal log of what messages get sent on an ideal startup for the car. So if we want to bring this panel on now, what we can do is we can replay these messages back onto the CAN bus and obviously with the car when it's working normally and you start it up you will be turning on the parking module so by replaying these messages back the parking module should kick into life so to do that there's a command called CAN player so you just type in CAN player then dash i for input file then a space and then you just type the file name that you're replaying in so this is the one we want to replay in um, this is the file here it's a huge file you can see all the different IDs and messages that get sent so if we replay this back in so I'll just press enter you see on the left now there's a there's a ton of messages coming through so it's picking up the, the messages that have been replayed back in so if we cancel the cam play with control C you see now the amount of messages on the left have died down and we've got a new ID on there that we didn't have before which is 1E8 you see them going through there so it's pretty safe to assume that is the one for the parking module because so we're not playing any more messages in we know that 2C8 and 50F come from this control panel so that means 1E8 must be coming from the parking module so while we've ver verified the parking module is working it's not much help in terms of being able to use it because we still don't know what message brought on the parking module but we can figure that out so if we go in the can dump so this is the can dump file that we just played back in so now we know that 1E8 is the can ID of the parking module so if we find the first instance of a 1E8 getting sent the command that turned the module on must have been sent fairly close to the timestamp it will obviously be before the, what, the first 1E8 but it will be fairly close so if we do a find on that brings us down to here so this is the first message that got sent on the car so if we want to try and figure out what message brought it in if I power off the test rig that's powered back on so we've got all our 2C8 messages coming through from the control panel now we're getting nothing again so the control panel has gone to sleep because no messages have been sent and obviously the parking module isn't sending any messages because it's not been told to wake up so from here we can copy the message the, f the first message before the module came to life on the actual car remember these are, this is a log from the actual car and copy that over to here and then we type can send all one word space and then paste in what we just copied so we need the can bus we want to send it to which is can zero and then the message itself so if we press enter on that one we see we're getting messages over here now but we're not getting anything from the parking module so we know the parking module's ID is 1E8 but we're only getting things from the control panel so we know it's not that message so if we go back to the next one up, and it's kind of, it's a bit of a long process, but it's just rinse and repeat. And eventually one of them, in theory, should bring on the module. So it's not 168. So let's try 268. Okay. 
Don't forget the can send you in front. So it's not two six eight. Try zero eight eight. Again, can send. Paste that in. Nope. Uh, one A eight is this ID. Oh, and there we go, there we go. So now we've got one E eight now broadcasting messages again. So we know the ID of zero eight eight is the ID that brings on one E eight. What we don't know yet is what each of these bytes, so remember these are normally split into bytes, so just two two numbers and letters. So we don't know what byte is actually turning it on, it'll be one of these. So I'm not going to do it in this video because I'm not really set up to do it, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zero all these bytes. Now I've got a little program that I'll put on Git when I get a chance, but it goes through each byte and cycles it up by one one value and then sends the message each time and then once it's done all of these bytes up to FF it will set these back to zero and it will start on this byte and it will do the same and it's just a case of watching the messages while the script runs to find out what byte is bringing it on but also what what bit of that byte is bringing it on so remember everything is normally done in, in bits rather than actual values unless you're talking analog so uh, Hope that's helpful for anyone who's looking at doing the same thing. I highly recommend doing it with test rigs like this. Is whilst you can get a lot of stuff from the car, you can never be a hundred percent sure what exactly is doing what. So if you think back to what I've just said with these bits, if you're doing it in a car, you know this byte might be transmitting, you know, five or six different messages, each by setting a separate bit high. So you're not going to know on a car. All you're going to know is that this message somehow sets this high because there's all this other traffic which no doubt is you know important stuff it's probably turning other other bits on or it's values for other stuff you're not going to know what bit it is that's actually doing what you want it to do by setting a test rig up like this you can actually find that out so probably the next one I'll do is once I've um, got a bit more information out of this parking module I imagine each one of these bytes is probably going to be a value of for each of those sensors and how close they are so there's too many sensors and there are bytes but I'm sure we can we can figure it out and maybe splitting them in half but yeah that would probably be, be the next video once I've figured that out I'll show you how that was figured out and then we'll also build a build an app that will display the parking parking sensors